Okay, so, we are talking about vector spaces, we last class we defined the vector space over a field. So, we have this operator and we have a field f, we have field operator also. So, this will be vector space over this field f, if we have certain properties and then we have taken example of a vector space, say any r to the power n is a vector space. So, r 3 is basically this is a vector space over this r. So, now we will define some of the properties with the scalar multiplication, this is called scalar multiplication, this is vector addition, this is the field addition, field multiplication, this dot. Okay. So, we, we have, we, now we define, we have some properties on this uh, vector space. So, first one is if you take the 0, 0 is the additive identity over this field f. Then, if we operate with any other vector, then this will give us a 0 vector. Okay. So, this is true for all x belongs to v, this is in general, but if you take this example. So, if you take x, say x 1, x 2, x 3, then if you multiply with this 0 vector, so this will be 0 into x 1 comma 0 into x 3 comma 0 into x 3. So, this is basically 0 0 0. So, this is 0. Okay. So, this is true, but in general we can prove this. So, how to prove this? So, to prove this we can take like this. So, say 0 can be written as 0 plus 0 is equal to 0. These are the field plus. Now, we can operate both side on x sorry this is field plus this is the now this will be 0 with x x is the vector. Now, we have the properties of this scalar now this will be basically 0 x this is the vector plus 0 x is equal to 0 x. Now, this is an element in vector. So, we can have minus of that we can operate this. Minus of minus means the inverse of that additive inverse that is why it is taking in minus sense. So, 0. Now, this will uh, this will be now we have another one. So, 0 plus and again we have uh, 0 plus. So, this will give us a 0, this will give us a 0 vector. So, this this is basically this will give us this vector, it is very trivial. Okay. Now, another property is. So, if you think in R 3 or this real vector, it then it will it will easier to visualize these properties. So, the second property is if we have a vec A, if we operate with the 0 vector then it will be 0. So, if you multiply with anything with, so if we take 0 vector, so 0 vector is 0 0 0. Now, if you multiply with any other any scalar with this, so this will be also 0 0 0. This is simple, but again we can formally prove for the general vector space like we did in the last class, last uh, example. So, now another property is these are also uh, minus 1, minus 1 is the uh, minus 1, 1, 1 is the additive identity and minus 1 is the uh, minus of, no sorry minus of x bar, this is equal to basically minus of x bar. So, if you multiply with the minus 1 with this scalar multiplication, this will give us minus of x bar. Now, another property is if we take a along with this, if this is a 0 vector, then either this imply either a is 0 scalar, 0 scalar or x is 0 vector, either one of this has to be there or. 
Okay, we can easily verify this with the help of this uh, this over this particular uh, vector space. But this is true in general. We can prove it. Okay, so now we'll define <coughs> what do we mean by a subspaces. What do you mean by subspaces? So we we have a vector space say, V with this operator, and we have a field F. We have two op operation binary operator over here, and we have another scalar operator which is taking an element from here, taking an element from here, which is giving another element from here. Okay. Now, if we have a subset over here W. Let W be a non empty subset of V. <coughs> and now, if we uh, if we have uh, induced set, induced operation, like if if we take any element from W, say W1, W2, these are all vectors. So, now, w 1 if we operate with w 2 this must belongs to w. Okay. So, this must belongs to w. So, that means, w if w is stable under plus this is the meaning of stability if w is stable under plus because if you take an element in w 2 element then v is a abelian group. So, closure property will be satisfied, but that will be element in v. So, it is not necessarily that must be an element in w. But if it is happened to be an element in W again, and if this is true for all this W and W2, then it is called W is stable under this plus operation, and then this is we can have a induced uh, function like we, we just consider those W and we operate, we take two element from W and then we operate, we get another element from W. Okay. Then this is a clear, and also if W is induced by W is stable by this W is stable under the scalar multiplication. That means if you take a scalar A and if you take an element W from W, then A if we operate with W. So now this is a vector space, so we know this must be in V. Now if it is happened to be in W, then we call W is stable under the scalar multiplication also. Okay. Then this two operator, then, then if W is forming a vector space over this operator, then it is called a subspace or sub vector spaces. So, that means, so if W is forming a, if W because this is step this is stable under this two is a is also a vector space over f that means it must satisfy all the properties that that, that means this this must be abelian group this is abelian group And we must have all the properties with the scalar. Okay. Then, if it is a vector space, then it is called subspace. If this is a vector space, then W is called a subspace or sub vector space. W is called a subspace. Okay. Here W is a subset of V, non empty subset of V, and W is stable under these two. We know the meaning of stability because if you take any two element from here, if you operate this, it should give us the element of here. That is the closure property we need. Okay, and then only we can define this plus over. Uh, this is we can say induced plus because we are restricting our set now on W. Okay. And this is the this is the also scalar scalar multiplication. We can say if W is stable under scalar multiplication, then we can say if W is again forming a vector space, 
that means, if W satisfying all the properties of the vector space, then we call W is a subspace of this V. Okay. So, uh, we can take some example of subspace. Uh, before that, we can have a necessary and sufficient condition for a subset to be a subspace. So, that is basically we can have a theorem on that. So, again we have a non empty set suppose let V be a we know this meaning of all this let V be a vector space vector space over the field. F and suppose W is a W is an unempty subset of V. Non empty subset of V. Then <coughs> W will be a subspace of V. be a subspace V if and only if this is the necessary and sufficient condition if and only if there are two properties is must satisfy one is with the this plus. So, that means, if we take any two vector x y belongs to w then Okay, then they are plus and if we take a scalar say a <coughs> this must true for all all a and x belongs to or you can take w w this is for all w. <coughs> So, if this property satisfy, this is the necessary and sufficient condition to a non empty subset to be a vector space. Okay. Now, uh, now this is basically uh, if what is to quite trivial, because if it is a subs subspace, then this two must be satisfied, because then it has to be this is coming from the closure property of plus and this is coming from the closure property of the, uh, the scalar multiplication. So, this necessary part is trivial if it is a subspace then this must hold now the reverse. So, reverse means the if it is a uh, uh, reverse means if this condition is satisfied sufficient condition if this condition is satisfied then we can say this is a vector space. So, for that we need to show that this is a subspace uh, this is a abelian group subgroup because W has to be a group also in order to be a vector space. So, W has to be a group under this this. So, two has to be a group we know uh, we have a theorem for group if we can show this uh, x if we take a vector x and if we take the this this must be belongs to w for any x y. So, this is the inverse of y this is the x if this is belongs to w then we know we have a theorem in group theory then we know this is a subgroup w is a subgroup of this. So, this also we can verify because uh, we can take a two element x y from w then minus 1 is there we can multiply with this scalar multiplication with y. So, this will give us a minus because this is a property in the vector space because this is again belongs to V. So, this has property in vector space and this has to be because the this has to be in the W. Now, if this both has to be in the W and then this x bar because from here this this is satisfied. 
So, x bar x or with minus y bar uh, sorry not x or this is called uh, vector addition this must be this must belongs to w. So, that means this is a necessary and sufficient condition. So, that means this is a w is a subgroup under this operation. So, that means this is a necessary and sufficient condition to a subset become a vector space subspace. Now, we can combine these two condition to have a single condition that is basically if you take a b for all a b belongs to f this is for all a b and for all x y belongs to w then this condition two condition is giving us a x bar plus b y bar this must belongs to w and this is true for all x y. So, this is the necessary and sufficient condition for a subset to be a non empty subset to be a vector space for uh, for that uh, a subspace for that vector space. Okay. This is just a combination of these two you can write in this way. So, for simplicity a x vector addition b y must be and this is true for all all a b all x y. Then we can say that subset is a uh, vector space. Okay. Now, we will take some example of the subspace. Some of the example of subspaces. So, we can take a vector space this. Now, we take a w which is basically say subset of R. So, x y z belongs to R 3 such that y and z are 0. <coughs> so, that means, it is basically R, R I mean we have these two components at 0. So, it is a, a real number if we take, it take this as a axis real axis x axis y axis z axis <laughs> over the plane. So, these two are 0. So, you have only real line. So, x axis only. Okay. Now, how to prove this is a vector space? We need to use the theorem last theorem we have necessary condition sufficient condition theorem. So, we take two uh, two vector say x x 1 x 2 x 3 we can take this as 0 simply because these are 0 y x y yeah y uh, y we have used here. So, x x 1 x 2 say x 1 x 2 yeah x 1 x 2 x 2 this. Now, if you take two uh, scalar a b. So, a x bar b x 2 x 1 x 2 this is basically what? this is basically again a x 1 plus b x 2 0 0 0. So, this is belongs to w and this is true for all such scalar a b and all such vector x 1 and x 2. So, this means this is a vector subspace. Okay. Now, we can take another example if we can take this to be 0, this uh, this is non 0, this to be 0. Okay, now, we will take an example where this is not a subspace. So, we take a vector space R 3. Now, we take a W like this which is a subset of this non empty subset such that x 1 plus x 2 plus x 3 x 1 plus x plus y plus z is 1. Okay. Is this a vector space? Is W is a vector space? I mean, subs then it you can say subspace. No, W is not a vector space because the identity element is not there, does not belongs to W because if we add it, it is not 1. So, does not belongs to W. So, it cannot be a group. 
it cannot form a subgroup. So, this is an example where this is not a vector space. Okay, now, the question is if we have a two vector space, two subspaces, then whether their intersection and union is also subspace. So, if we have a vector space V and if we have two subspaces W 1, W 2, these are two subspaces over some field F. Okay. So, W 1 along with this operator also W 2 are two subspaces of V. V is this <coughs> uh, bigger set. So, these two are non empty subset. Now, the question is whether intersection is a vector space. So, this 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 set intersection is a vector space or not. Suppose, this is W. Now, the W is non empty because since this W 1 and W 2 is a vector space, then the uh, 0 vector must be there in both the. So, 0 is belongs to so, 0 vector is belongs to W because 0 vector must belongs to both W and W 2 in order to this two has to be a subspaces. Okay. So, now we can use that theorem to show this is a vector space. So, theorem is telling if you take x from w. So, w is basically w 1 intersection w 2 and if you take y from w then we have to show that a x b y this also belongs to w for all x y and for all a b. Then that theorem will tell us this is a subspace. Now, how to prove this? Now, if this is true, then x y both belongs to w 1 and w 2, because this is the intersection. Now, if both belongs to w 1 w 2, then a uh, this is also belongs to w 1 w 2, because this is a both belongs to w 1 w 2, then then both belongs to the intersection. So, that means, this is a vector space, this is a subspace. Okay. Now, the question is whether union is a subspace or not. So, no union need not be a subspace. So, for example, uh, if you take two vector space say over R 3, say W 1 is basically uh, if you take this y and z to be 0. So, we have only x axis and w 2 is basically we have only y axis. So, x and z to be 0 we have only y axis. Okay. Now, this is not a the union is not a vector space because even closure property is not satisfied because if we take 1 0 0 this is belongs to the union and also 0 1 0 belongs to union, but if you take their plus this is basically 1 1 0 this does not belongs to the union. So, that, that means this is an example where union is not necessarily to be a uh, subspace, okay. but intersection is always a subspace. Okay, so, now we defined a linear combination a linear sum of two spaces. So, if we have so, this is called linear sum of two subspaces. So, basically how to define this. So, if you take a uh, if we take a subspace u from a vector space v and another w 
how many vector space be this. So, these are two non empty subset and this will form a subspace again. Then we define the sum u plus w is nothing but uh, this is u vector plus w vector this is basically uh, u is coming from u and w is coming from w this is just the sum. Okay. <coughs> now, we can show this is how we define the sum of two space. So, this if we if you have ok with this ok other is this is just a symbol. Okay. Now, this this set S we can show this set S to be a vector space again how to prove that. So, so that means, if we take two element from S any two element then we have to show that A this is also in S. If we can show this then we are done by the uh, theorem that uh, necessary and sufficient condition. So, how to show this? So, if you take an element in S, uh, if you take an element in S, then it is basically uh, x is basically this form. So, some u 1 w 1 and y is basically some u 2 w 2. Okay two element from this S. Now, if you take alpha of alpha sorry A some scalar x bar b y bar. So, this is basically giving us what? This is basically giving us alpha. So, this if we see alpha. So, u 1 w 1 plus sorry not alpha A u 2 w 2. Now, if we use the properties of this scalar and then if we combine this, this will give us basically uh, a u 1 this is the scalar multiplication x or with b uh, b u 2 this x or with a w 1 b w 2 these are all scalar multiplication. Now, this is an element in u this is an element in w. So, that means, this will be an element in u plus w. So, this will be an element in s. So, that means, this is a vector space. So, this is a subspace and this will be the minimum subspace containing uh, u and w. This will contain u and w because u and w are both subspaces. So, u and w both contain the 0. So, if we put w is equal to 0, this is basically giving us u. So, that, that means u and w, u is a subset of u plus w and w is also a subset of u plus w. So, e, this is union is also a subset of u plus w this is plus this plus it is just a symbol ok. And this is happen to be a minimum subset minimum subspace containing both u and w this sum space this is the sum of two vector space ok. Now, in the next class we will define the uh, linear combination and the linear combination of subsets uh, elements linear span thank you.